So if you're like me and you like cinematography and, and just video editing, you'll probably know the real use of lookup tables, where you usually in you know cinematography or, or film shoot in a log space where you have really flat color profile to be able to maintain as much of dynamic range as you can in the video. And then you apply lookup tables to that video in post to bring back all the details and contrast and have a great influence or a great control over the colors. So we can use lookup tables in 3D as well. And I kind of like going with the cinematography approach where I actually want to recreate the kind of log space in my 3D render to get, I just, I just feel like I have more control over the image while making my own LUTs to, um, or lookup tables to control the end result of that video. So that's what I will go through how my approach to this is uh, in today's video. So you may wonder why would you even want to create a log space in 3D? Now, what's the point? Well, in 3D, or at least in Storm, with tone mapping enabled, we are actually suffering from the same problem as we are doing in cinematography, where the images you save are only saved in 8-bit color space. 8-bit data is not enough to keep all the details in the shadows while also keeping all the details in the highlights. So usually images with 8 bits are either too overexposed in highlights or too underexposed in shadows. And the whole point of using log space is to be able to contain all that data in a flat color profile to be able to, in post-production, um, bring all the contrast back and still have all these nice details. And in F-Storm, if we're using tone mapping, we cannot save more than 8 bit of data because every everything else is clamped. So even though you can save images in 32 bits, only 8 bit of data is saved in the images if you are using tone mapping on. And I kind of do want to use the tone mapping in F-Storm because I love it so much. I think it does an amazing job. So doing it this way, recreating a log space in 3D kind of solves that problem for me. So I can still contain all the dynamic range in my image, even though I save it in 8 bit. And then I can create a lookup table to um, have full control of that data. So here I have a scene which doesn't look very interesting at all. And I want to do this interesting with using lookup tables. So basically what I can do is to make this look like somewhat of a flat image, like, like a flat color space. Like if it was filmed in like S log or V log or anything similar, and uh, then go into Photoshop and add some filters to it and color grade it. However, the nice thing with that is that I can then export those color grade changes as a lookup table back to 3ds max so i can have that color grading inside of 3ds max at all times i know that most people have been using lookup tables to grade their shots and you have a bunch of different ones here built in but the nice thing with ma making your own is that you can make it individual to whatever scene you are making right now so here, here I have the tone mapping settings, and these are pretty much the same as the standard values. I, I actually think they are, except from exposure. So what I want to do first, I want to replicate this log space. So I will kill the contrast. I will kill the burn value. Actually, I actually want to bring it down a little bit too. Maybe uh, minus, I don't know, minus one. Um, vignetting, I definitely want some vignetting. And the thing is that 3D lookup tables can contain like color data, but they cannot contain like local changes, like like gradient maps or vignettings or stuff. So if you want to have vignetting, add it here. I also want to increase the gamma a little bit. So maybe like 1.15 or so. Um, maybe I want to decrease the saturation a little bit. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't make a lot of change to be honest. Uh, but this is pretty similar to where you would have a log space um, in camera. So let's just copy this now into Photoshop. I wanna keep it simple. And uh, this'll be a super quick video because there's really nothing to it. So I'll just add a curve, for example. And I wanna have this as soft lights. So now I added some nice contrast to this scene. And I want to add, you know, maybe I want to increase the, the uh, exposure a little bit just with another curve. 
and some color balance maybe where are you color balance there so what can we play with this mid-tones highlights maybe a little bit more blue you can play around just until you find something that you think looks appealing to you I think this is starting to look pretty nice. Kind of like bringing back the leather color there. Also, what I want to do, I want to maybe add a gradient map. You can have gradient map, like a filter. You cannot have gradients like these. You know, you cannot have uh, masks, like layer masks. But as long as you're just using these here, you can use them as a lookup table. So going in here, I want to maybe do some brown. I kind of like brown like that. Maybe more colorful. Oh, what do I do now? Oh, okay. Maybe a little bit more saturated. And then I want to change this uh, blending mode to soft light as well. So now this is starting to look pretty nice. Maybe I want to adjust the blacks just a little bit. I still kind of like the contrast we're getting here. So I like this actually. Let's just for the sake of it, go back to the default values here. So here we have the default without any uh, color lookup. Like this. And like that. So looking at this now, I think, you know, I kind of like the blue tint that we have in the default here. So maybe I want to try to get some blue tint back in the midtones and shadows. And actually, no, I don't. I want to keep it cinematic. But yeah, I kind of like this. So now you can export this into a color lookup, but you have to make sure that your layer, your render layer here is actually the background. So just click that one and hit control E and it's getting merged with the background. Now you can go to file, export as a color lookup table, grid points 32, there are a couple of different versions of lookup tables with different grid points like 32, 64, 128, and so on. I don't understand what that is. 32 works just fine. The higher value you have here, the more file, the more space the file will take in your hard drive, I think. So I'll just keep it there. And uh, Jojo's Lit. Wow, that was a nice spelling there because my microphone is in the way. Desktop like that and now if I go into here I will put the settings back as I had it before now what I can do is click here go into my desktop and choose that lookup table and voila we are now having the same results as here it's pretty neat So the amazing thing here is that you can adjust this according to whatever scene you are, you are working with and whatever specific lighting you're having. And you know, this is looking, I really like this. You can obviously change the white balance here now. Actually, this, I made a mistake here because you shouldn't have any white balance here when you make up your lookup table. You wanna make that on a neutral image. I kind of did a mistake here, but you know, never mind. It doesn't matter really. So now when you're having this lookup table, you can still adjust it a little bit, like fine tune it inside of 3ds Max if you want to. Just gonna find a nice angle here. Set the focus. I wanna have um, some depth of field. That's looking sweet. Now what you can do, you can still play with the gamma values and so on to control. Like if you wanna have 
bring some more contrast back into any shots. Maybe some more vignetting. Now I'm still in the wrong screen, so I can't really tell if it looks good or not, but yeah, I think it does. Maybe I want to have a little bit more green. Just gonna do like that. So a little bit more green is gonna reduce the green and the white balance will give you more green in the image. So this is my approach of making lookup tables and grading my shots. This is a very, very simple approach. You just have to, you know, individually for each scene and e and you know each lighting scenario just uh figure out what works best for your shot so yeah that's it and hope this was informative even though it only took a few minutes and um as always thank you for watching